Good evening and welcome to Telford Ice Rink for Rinkside with Red Hockey. My name is Paul Shuttleworth, your match night commentator, and I'm joined with ex-Tigers captain Alan Gold, who is also the ex-chairman of the Telford Tigers Trust. Now, Alan, you took the trip down to Slough last night to see the Tigers take on Bracknell. How did they look? Well, for a pre-season friendly stroke uh, cup amalgamated game, they look very, very good. The game itself was nothing special. But uh, as far as the guys getting out on the ice uh, to give Tom a chance to see how the Lions were going to play together uh, in a match situation, it was very, very good, and they deserve to come away with the 4-2 victory. Fantastic. Last night's man of the match was Marcus Maynard. A little earlier on, I caught up with Marcus ahead of tonight's game. Firstly, congratulations on the man of the match last night. Yeah, thanks. Uh, got a goal, so better than last year's. <laughs> now, you're playing forward last night. How was that? Uh, a bit different, not really used to that, not ever really played like that in ice hockey before, so a bit of a change, but worked hard and paid off. Fantastic, and how were Bracknell last night as competitors? Uh, they were very good, they've uh, stacked their top two lines, so they're very competitive on them top two, so I think they'll do well this year. And uh, preparations for the Tigers, are you feeling confident we're going to better last year? Yeah, we've always got to uh, look to better than previous year, so Everyone's looking sharp, everyone's looking ready to go, so hopefully uh, we'll do that one more this year. Thank you, Marcus. Enjoy the game. Cheers. Right, so starting lineup, we've got Peter Zabo in centre. We've got Danny Rose, Sam Zajak in D. Salem and Macaulay Haywood on the first five for the Telford Tigers. As we look into the start of the first period of the new season as part of the Red Hockey Cup. The Bracknell Bees take on the Telford Tigers. Bracknell win the draw. Costa up wins it. Goes back. Zabo poke checks away and heads down into the right corner. Picked up by Danny Rose. Back to Sam Zajac. Up the boards and a shot comes from the... Bracknell Bees just in front of the Tigers bench, deflected from Netminder. Thomas Murdy between the pipes for the Telford Tigers tonight. Barkley backhands it over to the Dima. Turner puts it back down in front of the bench, off the skate of Peter Zabo. Haywood and Zabo get it into the neutral ice. Haywood reaches for it, but the defenseman's going to be the first man back for Bracknell with the puck, which I think is Fowler. Fowler on the backhand. Force played from Danny Davis. Back up to Callum Bowley on the backhand round the boards Davis up to the point Dan Scott wrist shot from the point and the netminder makes the save I, I just want to put in there Peter Zabo's picked up exactly where he left off last night I don't know where the guy gets his energy from he's 200 miles an hour all of the time and he was like that on his first shift there and we saw him uh, go for an early change, understandably. He plays with amazing intensity as well. I remember talking to him about his, his fitness regime. He's always the first on the training session, always the last off the ice, and he's got real dedication for the love of the sport. Davis now, over to Bowley. Bowley drop passes to Bearbray. Davis makes the shot in the first. Was that the first goal for the Tigers? The goal like, yes, it was. It was Danny Davis that put it in between the post and the netminder on the left-hand side. That was nicely worked and uh, a textbook setup uh, in the offensive zone and nicely executed. They're looking for the cross ice pass to Fowler, intercepted well from Macaulay Hayward. Davis drives the right wing, goes into the corner, comes out on the backhand, drops it forward to Bowley. Bowley makes the shot. It was a catching mid save and then dropped in the crease where the netminder covers it up for a stoppage in play. Again, that's a nice play from Telford. They're, uh, they're killing the attack down in the neutral zone two or three times in that shift. Graham pins Costa Rook on the boards. They're battling to try and free that puck up. And of course now the referees will encourage the play to continue. They'll shout at the players to kick the puck forward and keep it in play. The last thing we want is stoppage in plays in this fast-paced game. You just notice there as well, look, the guys are backing each other up, OK? It gets a bit messy when it's being kicked around the boards, but you watch when it stops. Two Telford guys there, yeah. two Telford guys again. In the past, maybe we haven't seen that. And then the support's there. Exactly. The first guy's in there and the support leads. The first penalty of the night coming up. And it's going against Smittle for hooking. 31, Lucas Smittle takes a two-minute minor penalty for hooking. He's a guy on your team you do want in the penalty box. Absolutely. D-men take a fly change. Bowley drops it back. Babray 
reaches for it, tries to poke it forward. Bowley battling for the putt, but the defenceman just getting his stick to the putt to throw off. Shot comes from Babray. And the save comes from a net. Side netting. Puck goes up high. Bracknell pick it up. Comes in front. That's dangerous. Costa up. Shoots to the back post. Barkalek turns and a pad save. Sends the puck into the corner. Two Bracknell players there. You notice that now we've only got one Tiger. Well, there's two there now, but previously there was only one. Yep. Let go what they were doing before. And it's in the slot. Messy. Benedict. Cross ice. Goes forward. Fowler on the right wing now. Delays the play. Barkley oh, makes the wrist shot, and that was straight into the helmet of Sam Gospel, and actually took his helmet off. It's taken it off, yes. And, uh, I don't and think I've it, seen that. Well, I've not seen it, but, but, but in this game, you know, any time the puck hits the player in the face mask, the, the game will stop. It's but, an uh, automatic stoppage of play. I've not seen a helmet knocked off. Uh, it must have been a very uh, a fast it, shot to do that. I think when Sam went down for the shot, he must have actually gone down, so the, the puck Maybe took the angle it, of yeah. hitting it, yeah. Cross eyes, Rick Plant. That's why he's going to have to take a shot because the clock's counting on. Get it away, get it away. Oh, near me. Now, he's not going to be happy about the no, guy no, no. basically mugging him towards <laughs> the end of the play there. At the end of the first period, Novak has lost his stick and he's now clutching something going on, and grabbing at Kusterok. Novak is no stranger to oh. mixing it up and he's pushing and shoving. Kusterok skated out of the way and his teammate come in to back him up. You don't want Kusterok on cheap plays, but he's neither of... Kosteruk or Novak are any strangers to a little bit of fencing off the play. And Novak did get a shot into his face. Oh, it's starting again now. And we've got both teams on the ice. And they're pushing uh, forward. They're pushing and shoving. Is it uh, it's no Novak's the one you've got to watch. The goalkeeper now, the Bracknell, you, you see, out. Novak 89 here, they need to keep an eye on because him and Kosteruk were the initial. And both of them are at the back of the play as players are scrapping in front of the bench. And... Metternham has stood between them because he knows that's where the trouble all started. But it was Martin Andre that was tussling in front of the goal. They're backing each other up well, that's yeah. the thing here. Yeah. So we've got Martin Andre and Galazzi. Yeah, there he goes. They should both go off, I guess, about the end of the period. Well, so it's the end uh, of the period, <laughs> so off to the dressing rooms. Interesting to see what penalties are issued here. Now look, keep your eye on Kosteruk because it was Kosteruk and Novak that the whole thing brewed up on. 88, right in front of you, is where that whole thing began with the 89. Met him, met him, the back of goalkeeper came down and he was doing a bit of pushing and shoving at centre ice as yeah. well. Well, he got in the way, he got between them. So at the end of the first period, quite an eventful one. Telford Tigers one, Brightnell Bees nil. Welcome back for the start of the second period. There was a bit of an altercation at the end of the period, and at the moment, there's a two-minute penalty against the Telford Tigers, and the Telford Tigers have got three guys in the box, and Bracknell have got two, so we've got coincidental penalties on there, but I'm yet to find out what they are. Smithle goes forward, oh, pulled back for hooking. Yeah, That's going to even it up, and there it goes. There's a two-minute minor penalty on Smithle. That's a great trade-off for Telford. But that's, Stra that's even things up straight nice in today. on 13 seconds. Salem carries it forward down the right wing, goes round, puts it in Good front, hands. picked up by Zabo, shoots, oh. and that was all about Antonov getting behind that puck and in the way of that shot from Peter Zabo. But a great pass from Nathan Salem. That was hard work by Nathan, and he set it up really well. A clear cut chance there to, to go 2 0 up. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't to be, but it was a good play. Now. Macaulay Haywood, cross ice oh, pass to Salem, Zabo's on a 1-0, and oh, shoots and a great save, that was a beautiful play, the three passes got it up to Zabo, there was nobody between him and the net, you got a 1-on-1 one -one penalty shot situation. It was a textbook breakaway uh, and it should have been finished really, Peter Zabo should be putting that away. Now, Andre okay. makes a shot. Another one straight of the, the game. Loose puck and McCauley. Oh, now, here we go. Point. Here we go. Davis and Smith. Go for it. Yeah, they're taking they're him going. off. They've decided to go. Here we go. And they're going one on one. Davis not happy at all. Smith gets a couple of left hooks in. Smith's holding him out quite well. Davis is trying to go up. And Smith comes over. Davis gets a right hander in there. But Smith has got the better of this as he goes in with the right hand. He's all caught up in equipment and they're locked out now. But both players not happy with the style of play. They drop to one knee, the linesman won't go into a four. Davis pulling out the way. 
Which Smith, Smith's keeping his head right out of the way, it's preventing him from yeah. getting a punch in. The linesmen have said enough, I in think, we go. I think, he got, go. I think he got one punch in, but his head was turned way, way out of the way there to do that anything meaningful. If they're four minute minors, I'll go coincidental, but if they're just twos, I'll go on the clock. It's livened the place up a bit. We just hope the uh, the game stays as it was. Yeah, and it's that balance of livening the game up, but you don't want players walking away with injuries exactly. as they start approaching the first game of the league season. Exactly. There's nothing great landed in that fight there. No. It was just lockout, wasn't it? Scott. And there oh, we go. And, again. and it's 2-1-1 on one here. This time it's this Smith, happened. Turner and Costerup. And it's all kicking off now. now. Smith went in for Costerup. And then the guy helped him out, and now you've got three or four guys all going together. Smith's going strong now. Ford's and going Ford, with Haywood. Ford and Haywood. Smith's still going and he's not on. He's locked out, and he's a strong young man, James Smith. So you're going to have a whole ruck of coincidental penalties go off now. You've got. They've locked out. Smith's off to the box. Scott and Barkalik tied up. They've both agreed by mutual consent. That'll do. Yeah, Dan, Dan Scott slipping it. That's because he was picking on one of the young guys, so yeah. Dan Scott sticking up for him. Yeah. But to be fair on Turner, it was Smith that went with Kosteruk and Turner stepped in. And again, Kosteruk is involved in this. This is, this is lining up. It's going to be a very exciting last 25 minutes here because that's kicked off. As I said it was, it looked like it was boiling. It was bubbling under, bubbling under. We've had two fights in the last minute. It was bound to come the way it was chirping on. You've got a very close game on your hands. It's a 1-0 game, a game uh, yeah. coming to the end of the second. Yeah. I think Tom would have been happier if at least one of those two opportunities had to come, come off. In. Yeah. Andre, cross eyes to Salem. Salem cuts it to the back post, Zabo cuts round. In the corner, feeds it through. Nice hands. Salem, once again. Oh dear, beautiful play. Fabray oh, tries to pass it through. Two on Antonoff through to Kosteruk. Kosteruk on the backhanded shot. Gospel makes the save, but the puck bounces down to the corner. Peter Zabo will pick the puck up. Goes up to the point. Salem. Well read by the Bracknell defenceman. And that's the oh, end yeah. of the second period with the Telford Tigers at one. And Bracknell B's nil. Now let's just watch here, see if there's any chipping goes on because the Bracknell guys. Oh, skating through the Telford guys to get to, to the, the netminder. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it's all that's all good. Uh, Barkalik's gone back to Dan Scott for a little word. Is Barkalik still playing? And Scott's explaining why he felt the need to go. I think. And the third period, the puck drops. Bracknell win it, goes back. Coincidental penalties on all the players. Zabo gets the puck and unfortunately just scoops it. Just got underneath it and lifted it deep into the corner. Antonov back to his Dima. They're on the turn. Throw it deep into the corner. Oh, it's caught by... Certainly caught. Yeah, I think it went through. I thought it was going into the corner and uh, Sam Gospel just plucked it out in the air. And Nets has played really well for Bracknell yeah. tonight. I think he's their player of the match. Now, that was a cheap slash on Scott from the defenceman just in the high slot there. Just as he skated through, he just gave him a crack. No, there's a goal! The loose puck picked up by Max Bray, backhand into the left side of the net to put goal number two at 49 minutes and 56 seconds, doubling the Tigers' lead. Max Bray picked up a rebound, backhand straight into the net. Off the draw. The puck battling now in the corner against the boards. Turner to the back post and a great That's goal. Yeah. Set play, Kosteruk on the back post. Gospel's watching the puck carrier. He shoots it what Gospel perceives to be wide, so he leaves it. Kosteruk's there, yeah. tips it straight in the net, and we've got a game on our hands now. I think now. that's been coming for a while, that one has, really. Yeah. It's, um... To be fair to Bracknell, there's been a couple of opportunities where maybe they should have appeared on the clock. I think Telford need just to cool down and play yeah. the defensive game for the last two minutes. and it's Taylor. Already... Takes a knock on from Smith. Yeah, good shift from Smith again. His confidence seems to be coming back. There's Ajax back out. And a goal! Oh, I missed that one. It was Adam Taylor good that just popped it in the back of the net. I think it was brought around the back of the goal. The netminder was on it, gave it to Taylor, just poke checked it in, I think. And that puts the Tigers 3-1 up with two minutes and three seconds remaining. 
Well, it's good to see Adam Taylor getting on the score sheet. He's, uh, he was a regular with the Tigers last year. I believe he's playing NIHL this season, but yeah. playing up. And yeah. that'll do his confidence the world of good as well. But yeah, all in all so far, that's well, the end of the game nearly, but it's been very entertaining end to end, I think. Salford have fully deserved it to be on top. They've taken what chances they've had. Shot and goal as from Danny Davis. As we speak. Right <laughs> from the hash marks, the... Danny Davis picks up the puck and skies it home for a 4-1. And yeah. to be fair to Bracknell, it's been pretty harsh on them in the last three or four minutes. It has. It's a, it's a bit, of, bit of a harsh scoreline. A good scoreline for us here at Salford. A bit harsh on Bracknell because they haven't really played that bad. There's a battle against the boards as the clock ticks by. 27 seconds remaining of this game. Zajac goes in, plays Antonoff against the boards. It's quite a sturdy hit. Zajac will go in for the puck now. 15 seconds, there's not a lot left. And Zajac Stick comes across. Really hooked in the corner and it, there. And it's it Custer up again. The there. arm's gone up for the it's penalty. And there's only five seconds left now. Smittles, Smittles coming in and pulling Novak out of the way. There's gloves flying. And there's, and there's punch and hits going McCauley's in. McCauley's going in as well. Yeah, Hayward's hey. going in across the top. Now, Novak wants to go and the ref won't let him. Who's that? Zajac's tied up again, so that's a penalty point. That's You've Zajac in Balkrick. It's the smallest versus the biggest. Yeah, and on the boards, everyone's just battling up here. Novak, look at Novak with Castor up. He's grabbed him around the neck in a stranglehold. He's trying to make him go. And Novak's like, what are you? He's trying to trip him up. You know, like little kids in the playground. He won't have it, will he? No. Now, the problem is, Zajac's already got a 10. Yeah. Zajac and Barclay are tying up, and Gospel's trying to push him out and of the way. And the goalkeeper, now, Annette should not come down this no. far. Annette's just decided he wants to go with... Go oh, no, Annette's he's done to play Gospel. with Gospel. Uh, what, the, what on earth is that about? What on earth is happening there? And that's your idiot. And now back up to your own end of no, the game. Novak's going with Is it Costa Rock? He's yeah. feeding him. Well, I hope after the way Costa Rock's been this game, that Novak puts him through the ice because he's been disgusting and unsportsmanlike and, all game. And now Novak's dragging him round. All game. Now you see, this is. We've but Gospel's we've taking his gloves off. Yeah. Come on, Sam, lad, Gosp you give him what he needs. Gospel's going to go with him. Needs. So the netminders now. Look out, Gospel comes over the top. Annette's pushing. Right hand from Gospel. Right hand from Annette. One each, over the top. And he grabs his shirt. Sam loses foot in and they both go in the box. That was actually fairly even scratch. Yeah, it was. Fair play to Sam but Gospel. I thought there was a, ru a rule that the goalkeeper shouldn't come over the halfway, or am I, am I not thinking right there? No, you're right. And... If it were me, and I was the referee on that game, I'd have said to the timekeepers, leave the clock running. Yeah. I don't want to play for another five yeah. seconds, wipe it off. So what is, what is the rule of the goalkeepers? Are they that, supposed that, to stay? No. Yeah, it, they, they can... I think it's the blue line. Right. But, yeah, I think it's the blue line. I mean, he made the decision he was going to go, and I think he's just like, I want to play. But we're all, we're all for having a bit of fun, and it's, and, it, and it's a friendly Stoke Cup game. But for, 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 uh, it wasn't... It wasn't that sort of incident to warrant no. the net skating all the way down the ice. Gospel wasn't even involved. He was no. away from it all. And, and not into, he didn't even realise he was coming. Of course it wasn't. So, a good start tonight. Early goal from Dan Davies on 1 minute 22. You must have been pleased with that. It was a great finish. Uh, I think he dropped his shoulder, moved the goalie and, and just popped it in. But I think it was a nice uh, give and go off the wall. And then it opened up to the middle of the ice. So, yeah, it was a good finish. But it seemed like it was uh, it seemed like it was a very long time ago. You know, the yeah. game dragged on a little bit tonight. The second period was relatively non-eventful. Everybody doing their job. And then the third period and the end of the second is where all this chipping had started. How do you feel about that? Uh, I think it started in the first period. Yeah. And uh, if guys want to play that way and uh, come in here and try and challenge us, that, challenge us that way, then you know we're not going to allow that to happen. Um, I think teams potentially will take that approach with us a fair bit this season. Um, and I thought our guys stuck together really well, and I think that's great for our team spirit. So uh, you know I'm pleased with. It. I don't think we played at our at our best today. I think our speed and uh, our transition was was not there, but it's it's early in the season. Um, so generally, I'm, I'm I'm pretty pleased with the week we've had. Uh, I wouldn't say to, I'm overly happy with our performance this evening, but in terms of the week where we are, the guys have been on the ice two twice a day um, with workouts in between. So they're going to be fatigued. They're going to be tired at this point. So there's there's a lot of good things that we can take out of this this week as coaches and a look at as video to to make you know to help us improve. And the NHL guys as well put in a good couple of shifts tonight. 
I thought Macaulay Hay was outstanding, certainly through the first two periods, but we missed him for a long time, you know, after those penalties. Um, he's, he's, he's had a tough, tough year, but he's, he's bounced back really well, and I can't be more proud of him. Uh, he stepped in there at the end of the end of the game, and uh, he's a character. You know, he's totally talented. He's he's good on the puck, uh, but he's he's got areas that he's got to make improvements, just as they all have. But he was the standout guy for me for those guys that we we, we brought up today. And fantastic! Your next game Saturday night, Manchester come here to Telford. Yeah, we play Coventry Wednesday first, so we're we're on that at the moment, and I think for the team it's going to be a it'll be another level, another uh, another speed. So we've got to match that. You know, we've got to up our game, up our intensity a little bit. And to be honest, we were sloppy tonight at certain times, so we've got to make sure that we don't turn the puck over in key areas against the quality hockey team. So an encouraging win for the Tom Watkins' men, the Telford Tigers, winning 4-1 against the Bracknell Bees. So next week's game is at home on Saturday night against the Manchester Phoenix. It's a six o'clock face-off, and if you want to get all the tickets, you can go online to tigershockeyuk.com.